But we can't really do much with these until we start moving into some sort of verb. We can do things to these. So we're going to talk about functions. The first two functions almost everybody learns is how to print because it's really useful to be able to see what's in these. So the first one, if you've ever used Unix, is familiar. It's cat. It stands for catenate, which just means uh, connect, but in this case it's print. And you can either catenate a string or anything you put in there, and it will just belch it out to the screen. Or you can actually put variables in there too, and it will print those. Another version of this is print. It does very similar things. The major difference between cat and print, print automatically and, uh, gives you a new line after the end of it. So if you print multiple things, it will give them each a new line. Cat does not put that new line. So if I were to do, that was fun. It puts them on the same line. But if I change this to print, it does not like that. I will show you why in a little bit. <laughs> but the, the important part is print does not give you a new line. Now, this is a really, really simple example of a function, but there's, again, a lot to go over. It's a grammar this, right? What's the new punctuation we saw here? What does not show up when we're defining variables and scalars? Uh, the commas uh, are new, and I will, I will tell you why. But what's the one other than that that you see in every one of those functions? Parentheses. Parentheses mean functions. If you see parentheses, it's a function. Even if there's nothing in those parentheses, it's still a function. In order to leave R, you use Q with two parentheses. That is because exiting is a verb and a function. Even though there's nothing you have to give it uh, to, to complete that function, it's still a function. So it's always going to be labeled with those parentheses. And I'm not going to quit because we're not done. Additionally, just to drive this point home, it doesn't matter how much you space these out. It will still function as a function, even if there is a space between the function name and the parent, uh, parenthetical. Don't do this. It makes for really hard to read code. Um, if you want to space things out, between the parentheses and what you're adding, great. But generally try to keep the name of the function with that parentheses. It just makes everybody's life easier. And it does exactly the same thing. You know what you can do with a verb. Because different things are going to have different limitations. Print is one that works on virtually everything. But it's good to know what it expects. To find that out, you can do question mark, and any function. If it ends with parentheses, you can do question mark, that name, and it will pull up this help form right here for you. And it will tell you what it expects. In this case, it expects some input and describes those inputs below. I will ask you about a thousand times, how do you know? And the answer is 90% of the time would be question mark function. Keep that in mind. We're going to drill that home because it's the easiest way to find out what's going on. It automatically brings out this help, and what's nice about this help is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it gives you examples. One of the quickest ways to know how to use a new function. If you're trying to figure out what something that someone has given you, you can identify that it's a function, question mark, that function name, and you'll get an idea of what it's looking for. And it will tell you, oftentimes, in this section where it's defining the things that you put in here, it just says an object used. This will take virtually any object, but this will often define it defaults to a string. It's looking for a character. It's looking for an integer. It will tell you here what it is expecting and what it can handle. That make sense? It's the easiest way to identify what's going on uh, and what that is expecting. Now, again, uh, if you do Work in functions. Can you explain a little bit all these arguments? And, because I read the print values and I don't really understand what you say. This is kind of a hard one to read, and I'll actually go through one that's a little easier. Um, in fact, 
think cat is actually easier. Yeah, so cat gives you this. This is the most important line for you. So what this is saying is it's expecting these arguments or parameters or options. These are called different things in different languages. But this is just input extra stuff that goes with these verbs. This is kind of like adverbs. These are describing specifically how it's going to do what you're asking it to do. Anything in this list that has a definition, like fill equals false, this is a default. This tells you that it's automatically assuming this. If you wish to change that, you have to tell it that. So in this case, it's not filling, it's not labeling um, or appending. The separation it, it's using when it's printing is a space. If you want that to be a tab or a comma, you can say sep equals whatever in here. And we'll get more into this in a minute. But this is just saying cat wants some sort of input. If you want it to be a file, you have to tell it. And if you want it to do these things, you can change those. But if it is defined, it is a default. So all of these are defined, which is why we didn't need to use them when we used cat. But if you see something that's not defined like this, that doesn't have anything after it equals, it's something it needs. So if you look at a function and you see something that's not defined, that is a necessary input. You have to get that information in order for that function to occur. Uh, and just as we saw with quotation marks, if you're doing a function and this will happen to you, I promise, and you leave off that parenthesis, you will see that plus. It means you lost a parenthesis somewhere. Doesn't necessarily mean at the end, it just means somewhere. Again, if you hit escape, it will get you out, and you can try again. Um, when you're looking at this and you highlight that, you don't see a parenthesis, you can add one and it will show you that it's made here. This is another one of those beautiful aspects of our studio. If you're doing R on its own or on the command line, this does not happen, which is why I really like using RStudio as a prototype before I move any code to scaling it on like the call server. Okay. And that is virtually everything you can do with scaler. You can define them, you can print them, you can use them in other data types, but they're pretty basic, right? 